Once again, it's a shame to break up the good fellowship that's going on, but we've been doing that, it seems like, the whole week. But we'll do some of that afterwards as well, if you like. Feel free to do that. But it's time for us to begin with our singing and our lesson for this evening. We're glad that you're here once again. It's my observation that we have had some tremendous attendance so far in this Cane Ridge Lectureship, perhaps the best overall that I've seen uh, in the 14 years that I've been here. I don't know that before that, but we appreciate everyone who's supporting this. Remember tomorrow we continue this with our regular services here and then also our final session of the lectureship, which will be held at the Cane Ridge Meeting House in Bourbon County, not too far from Paris, Kentucky. And we have the unique opportunity to worship together there and perhaps a unique day in which it will not be as hot as a typical August day. So if you're able to be with us, even if you're from another congregation visiting with us tonight, we hope that might allow you time to be with us and still get to your evening services. And for those of us who may uh, not be available, those who may not be available tomorrow to come to either service, sometimes that happens, we will be having an abbreviated service here tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, uh, especially for those folks. But we're glad that you're here tonight, and we look forward to the speaker and the lesson that we're going to hear. One of the things that we try to do with the lectureship is to bring in both speakers from some distance and also speakers from close by each year. And that's what we've done. Uh, that's what we're going to appreciate tonight. Brother John Ferguson is with us, and he has preached 22 plus years for the Glen Arvin Church of Christ, which is just across town. And I've known John for 14 years since I've been here and appreciate him. And I look forward to the lesson he's going to bring us tonight. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Brother John is a native of Trenton, Tennessee, but I think he's been in Lexington long enough to have blue blood. Is that true? I believe that's right. So we will, we will not hold that against him. But uh, he is a native of Tennessee. He's married to... Cynthia Yvonne Black, the former Cynthia Yvonne Black of, of Milan, Tennessee. They've been married 32 years, and their daughter is also with them tonight, Joe Nisa, John Nisa, John Nisa. I'm working on that, trying to get that right. We're glad that they're able to be here with him as well. Uh, Brother John has had educational opportunities at the Memphis School of Preaching, Moody Bible Institute, Fried Harbin University, Lexington Bible College, Theological University of America, and the University of Kentucky. So he must have done all this before gas prices went up. But uh, certainly very educated, uh, not only as far as, uh, of course, the Bible, but also uh, he serves as a, an adjunct professor of behavioral science at the University of Kentucky and also as a full-time professor for the Bluegrass Community and Technical College in the area of behavioral sciences. But of course what we appreciate most tonight is his knowledge of God's Word, and we're excited that he's going to continue the theme that we've had here uh, as imitators of God, and he's going to talk to us about serving as the Lord. And he'll, He will come and speak to us at the assigned time after Brother David leads us in some songs. Our prayer this evening is going to be by Brother George Irwin of Hurricane, West Virginia. Brother George has preached for over 50 years in West Virginia. He's currently retired and only preaching three sermons a month uh, for two congregations there, helping them out. And uh, we appreciate that he's able to be here, I think perhaps at his first Cane Ridge Lectureship. We're glad that he's enjoying this, and he will lead us in addressing God tonight in prayer at the appropriate time. Let's get ready to sing as David leads us. We'll sing number 111. Number 111, come we that love the Lord. If you would, please stand while we sing together. <laughs> And we have Oh, 
We do indeed praise you, not only because that you are the great God and creator of the universe, but for your love and mercy to us. We thank you that through the gift of your Son, we can have forgiveness of sin and that all can make a new start in life being truly born again of the water and of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work of those who have striven to restore true Christianity to our country and to our world. And Heavenly Father, we pray that there will be a continuous effort and that we will be successful in building up the cause of your son and the church for which he died. Heavenly Father, we live in a wonderful country still having a great deal of freedom and we pray that we will always have that freedom. But Father, we feel for the people across the world that do not have the same freedom that we have. Father, we know that if our country is to be great, it will not be because of great presidents or great congressmen or senators but it will be because of righteousness, for that is what exalts a nation. And we pray, Father, for a greater degree of righteousness in our land. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this congregation and pray your richest blessings upon every member and upon the elders, the leaders, the preacher and all who work to make it a success. But especially at this time, we thank you for this lectureship and for all the speakers and for all who have attended. We pray your blessings upon our speaker tonight, bless Brother John. We thank you for him and for the work that he does and ask that you will bless him as he brings the lesson tonight. Heavenly Father, look into our hearts, and if we have sinned and have repented, we pray that you will forgive. And Father, for those who have been mentioned as being sick and needing your blessings and needing the strength of and help from doctors and nurses and those who would help to restore them to their health. We pray that you will bless them. In the name of Christ, we offer this prayer and our thanksgiving. Amen. Come unto me. It's not the version that's in our hymn books. It'll be on the overhead only. Come unto me. Before the lesson tonight, we'll sing number 658. 658. Please stand again as we sing. There is much to do. Oh, <laughs> 
for me now. It is so good. It is so grand to be here tonight. It's about like David when he spent a long time on a run trying to make it back to a place where he can find himself and find his strength. He simply said one thing, it is good for us to be here. And it's good for us to gather together to gather, as we simply say, to, to praise each other and to uplift God's holy name. We energize, we motivate one another when we come together. And those songs that we've been singing throughout tonight are songs that really enrich our souls and uplift the spirit. Just the last one in and of itself simply has called us unto a life of service. There's much work to do. There is work on every hand. Hark the cry for help comes ringing through the land. We need to understand that we need to deserve a servant mindset. A mindset that will cause us to move out and do some good in this life. Because that's what God has called us to do. To make this world, my friend, a better place. And at the end of this lesson tonight, I hope that you who haven't yet made up your mind to become a servant of God, that you'll do just that. You'll turn your back on the devil and, and you'll turn and give your heart to divinity itself. You'll come down when you have changed your mind about where you're now standing before a sinless God. And you'll acknowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. You'll be willing to go down in that grave of baptism that God may cover you and like Jesus raise you to walk in the newness of life. And during your soul journey here, if you're walking faithfully, you'll be like Jesus upon his, on his leaving. The Bible lets us know that the angels came and took him on to heaven. That's the goal. That's the dream of every child of God. And when he leaves, the angels will take him and put him in the, arms, in the arms of Abraham in his bosom. So I hope tonight that if you are a child of God also, that you don't have that servant mindset. If you have yet to put your hands to the plow to really turn things over so that God's word could be planted, rooted in the hearts of men that it may bring forth fruit in this due season, that we'll decide to do that tonight. Because I believe that all of us here tonight are children of the king and all of us ought to be serving as unto the Lord. You got your Bibles with you? I always tell the church at Glen Arvin, Short preacher, short sermon. And I want you to know that. We shall not be long tonight. The book of Ephesus. Here's the Apostle Paul. 
Even though he's dealing with some people who are having some difficult time, they're having some trials and tribulations in their lives. But yet he still takes the time. And he writes unto these the Ephesian saints to try to encourage them to do what they know is right for them to do. And he simply says in verse 5, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh. The whole ideal of it is that we ought to be people who are serving and serving God courageously and continuously. The Bible said we ought to serve according to the flesh, not just those men, but do it with fear and trembling, in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. He goes on to say, listen, not with eye service, not with eye service as men pleases, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. That's what it should be, with good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or whether he be free. The Apostle Paul although often in prison and persecuted, always had it in his mind to, to try to instill in the heart of those troubled saints some peace, some tranquility. He want these people to understand what it is like to be a child of God, a productive child of God in his vineyard. That's what Paul was trying to get across to these Christians, and that's what he intended for them to have. Because their stability... Their stability and their strength were dependent upon these things. And I'm hoping tonight that in our troubled times and in our, in our difficult moments, that we will reach within as Paul has tried to encourage them to do, to find those things that will stabilize us and stabilize, mobilize, and cause us to move forth in the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all of this comes simply by three truths that he presents within this context. He needs to know, and so they need to know, that there is awareness of their salvation, the acknowledgement of their individuality with God, and the appreciation of their serving in the kingdom of God. When they feel these things, then you can deal with the external forces that are going against you, that are working against you, that are keeping you from rising unto God's expectation. And so tonight... I want to just a, a few hours, not where well, I thought I'd catch you on that one. A few hours, well, Paul, then, well, he preached at midnight. We got a few hours to go. But we won't be long tonight. But I want to encourage us all as servants of the king. Okay, these three things I want us to do. And so now let's get to our lesson. Here's the first thing we need to understand. Our recognition, our responsibilities, and of course, last but not least, our reward as servants of God. We need to understand and recognize who, exactly who we are. We are God's servants. We at times may be man's servants as well. But either way it goes, whenever we can come to accept the fact whom we are, to whom we belong, and to where we are trying to go and what we are trying to produce in life, it is then and only then that we can be the productive servants that God would have us to be. We've got to realize who we are. And Paul gets down to the fact that he, he acknowledges them. He said, listen, servants. And when he calls attention to them, who they were, he wanted them to know exactly who they were. They were servants. It made no difference whether they were bond or free. It made no difference whether they were tied down by the chains of life or whether or not they could move about as freely as they want. He said, either way it goes, you are a servant, and servant must do one thing. That is to get about God's business and do some serving. Because I believe that when you are tied down, when you are being so mistreated or ill-treated in life, and you do not have that freedom to become all that God would have you to be, it changes our disposition. We begin to feel uh, less than who we are, and we have no kind of motivation 
to go on and become all that God would have us to become. Therefore, our, our position should not shape our disposition. In other words, if we are good days or bad days, you still need to understand that we are servants in the Christ. Whether everything's come together or all things fall apart, it makes no difference. We still need to be, we still need to be servants of God. Number two, we're moving on. We are servants. And that Greek word simply means we're doulois. And that doesn't mean just some of us, but that means each and every one of us. We are servants of God, and no one should ever get to the point and place to believe that we're anything less. We're servants of the king. And servants do one thing. They discharge. They discharge duties for others, and they do things on the behalf of others because all saints, we are servants tonight. And until these Ephesian saints get that, they have to be reminded of that. You are God's servant. And since you are God's servant, no matter how low they may make you feel, you're still riding high with the Lord. How insignificant they may have you to believe, you are truly, truly, we are important to God. So every last one of them, there is no room for one sneaking out and doing what he or she pleases. There is no room for one not living up to God's charges. When he uses the word do Lord, he said every one of you. If you know that, that's the second person plural. The ideal of it is the whole group as a church needs to realize that we are God's servants. And servants do one thing, they serve. We're going to serve somebody. We either going to be a servant of man or we're going to be a servant of God. We are either going to be on the workplace doing what they would have us to do or what has been prescribed for us in our job descriptions. We're going to do those things. We're going to live up to their expectations, their goals, their performance values, and things of that nature. Why? Simply because we realize we are servants of man, are we not? And not only are we servants of man, but most of all, we are indeed servants, servants to God. And he simply said, listen, servants. Whenever we can embrace that, whenever we embrace that, we will go and we will fulfill that. He said, servants, I want you to submit and obey your masters, your lords, your laws, people who have the right to demand certain things of us, people who have the right to demand or expect certain behaviors. They are our laws. They are our kudos in life. They're our lords in life, like Jesus is our Lord. He has the right to expect certain things of me. He has the right to expect certain things of you. He has the right to expect things from all of us because it is he who has made an investment in us. It is he who has paid the price for us. It is he who has given something and so much for us. It is he that says that because I have purchased you, you are my servant and I have the right to the man and command things of you. I believe tonight that all of us who are Christian, born from above, washed in the blood of the Lamb, we need to understand that he tells them right here and there, you obey your masters. You obey your masters, your lords, according to the flesh. Jesus is our Lord because we need to understand that he purchased us with the shedding of his own blood. Yes, John 13, 16, Jesus talks about him. Listen, the servant is no greater than his master. We need to understand Jesus is our master. If you are a child of God, Jesus is your master. If you are not a child of God, listen, he reaches out and, and to a great degree, he calls you. He has a right to even call you, even if you have not and have failed to answer his call. Have you been purchased? Most of us have. So that to be the case, then we are their servants. He is our Lord. And since he is our masters, and these Ephesian saints were experiencing captivity, they were experiencing imprisonment. But even the apostle Paul, he said, I therefore the prison of the Lord beseech you, brethren, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you have been called, Ephesians 4.1. The point of it is, is that when you are servants, you have been purchased. But we haven't been purchased uh, with corruptible things such as silver and gold. But we have been purchased with the precious blood of the Lamb. 
And since God has purchased us, he is our Lord, he is our master, then it does it not come to conclude that we ought to listen to what he says and we ought not just disobey but really truly obey with all the time? He said in 1 Corinthians 6, 20, he said, for you are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. God has purchased us. And since Jesus' blood has purchased us, we are his servants. He is our Lord. And what we need to recognize, as soon as we begin to have that pride, that, that God-like pride of realizing that we are God's children, we are God's purchased, we are God's servants, then we'll begin to serve him the way God had intended. I'd like to do here, thank you all so much. Here's our responsibility. I told you I'd be short and Sherman, well, you're going to be out here so quick that you're going to think what happened. Be out here quickly. We have a responsibility. Realize who you are. We're children. Everybody's proud of who they are. But you are a child of the king. We ought to be proud of who we are. Take that name. Like the apostle Paul said, he's, I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is a power of God. The salvation to everyone that believes it. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. I'm not ashamed, oh my Lord, neither am I ashamed. But I am proud to realize that I'm a, I'm a, I'm a child of God. But here's my responsibility. You see, some of us, we get in church... We get in church and we become Christians and we forget that Christians have a job to do. We forget that Christian has to be about their father's business. Am I right? We forget that as Christians that we need to be servant as our Lord was a servant. We have a responsibility. Listen to what the Bible said. He said, servants, obey them who are your masters according to the flesh. They have a responsibility. And no matter how pleasant it is or how unpleasant it may become, we have a responsibility, and that responsibility is simply is to obey our masters according to the flesh. And your workplace, if they tell you come in at 8 o'clock, are you coming at 8.30? You might do it for a few moments. But those who you're serving will not put up with that for a long or extended period of time. So our responsibility is to do one thing, and that is to obey somebody, to hear someone clearly, and to give heed to what they have to say. I don't want to just hear that. I don't know about you all, but I, I was a tough little fella growing up. I was the last of nine children, and boy, it was rough in that house. And my mama do tell me to do something, and, uh, and then she'll ask me a question. Did you hear me? Uh-huh. Well, why didn't you do it? I don't know. When she said, hear you. In other words, you ought to take into consideration what is expected of you and how we ought to rise and fulfill that. When you look at the word, well, uh, what is that, hupakuete? When you look at that word, he's talking about that, is that we're talking about hearing it, not just hearing it, but hearing it to the point that I comprehend it. Not only do I comprehend it, but I complete it. I go on, I comprehend, and I complete it. Because there's a message that's being sent. And when we do that, we obey the Lord. Am I not right? He simply said, obey your earthly masters. You can't just hear it. And my mom said, now, boy, look here. It went in one ear and came out the other. Y'all ever heard that? We used to do that all the time. It went in one ear and came out the other. But the point of it is in this, this hupakoite is that we are not just hearing it, but we are digesting it. We are really taking hold of it, and we move because of it. We ought to obey our master. That's our responsibility. And every last one of us have that responsibility as God's children to obey him. As we have responsibility to obey, as the scripture says in Hebrew, in Hebrews, that obey them to have the rule over you. Ephesians 6, 1, young people, get this in mind. He said, children, obey your parents. Same word here, the same word. Listen, 
hear them, understand them, and move and act on their wishes. Live up to their expectations of you because that's what God would have you to do. You cannot be a servant and not serve those whom are over you. All right, that's quick up and ready to go. Y'all ready to go? How do we do it? Few reasons why you do it. Not as men please us. Do it with fear and trembling. Do it as Christ's servant. And do it willing good. What do you mean by not men please us? I don't know about you, but some folks don't work until they know someone is watching them work. Some people are watching the clock at work. Is that right? Knowing that some people are watching them. He tells these Christians here, you obey them. Your masters in the flesh, you obey them. Not the only because they are watching you. You obey them even when they are not watching you. The idea of it is we are not doing it with our service. Is that we just playing around till we see somebody and then we get to acting as if we are busy. Listen, whenever you do what's right, you work whether someone is looking at you or not. We don't do it for our service. We're not doing it for men pleasing. We're not trying to get brownie points. We are doing it because that's what we ought to be doing. Whether you see me or not, whether you buy me or not, whether you're keeping watch on me or not, I am doing what I'm supposed to do because I realize I need to obey my masters according to the flesh. Now, the Bible is plain. I don't do it with our service. I don't do it to please men. I'm doing it for one thing. I want to please my Lord because we sing the song in VBS. There's an all-seeing eye watching you. See, God is always looking. God is an omnipresent God. God sees all, God hears all, God knows all. And see, the ideal of it is, even if this master in the flesh is not watching me, I need to understand that my master in heaven is always looking down. Even if my master in the flesh doesn't require certain things of me or allow certain things to flow, I need to understand that I have a master in heaven who never, ever changes his way or his will. You see, we need to understand that, yes, we ought to obey those whom have, who have their lead and rule over us in the flesh. But I do it not to be seen of men, but because I know that God is always watching me. And whenever I know God is watching me, what I do makes no difference. If I'm all by myself, I still do the right thing. Why? Because that's the way God wanted to be. Not as a I service, not as men please, but you do it with fear and trembling. What do you mean? It is not my fear that calls me to move. It is not my cowardice that calls me to move. It's not my fear, but my faith, not my cowardice, but my courage. That's what causes me to move forward simply because there's something within me that God instills that calls me to do this. I'm doing it not because I'm afraid. I'm not because I'm trembling because of you. Jesus said, fear not man who can destroy the body, but fear him who can destroy both body and soul. You see, the problem of it is, is that we need to look at God, see these people, but see God behind the people. And whenever we see God in everything that we do, even if we don't feel like doing it for the person, we know that God is behind and we're seeing him more so than seeing the person that's before us. So sometimes these people can be rough, according to Colossians chapter 3. And people can be rough, 2 and 3. People can be rough. Those whom are masters in the flesh can be difficult at times to work with. They can be difficult at times to, to work for. However, you know, even if they do you wrong, guess what? You still do what's right by them because, listen, God, our master, is above this master, and he even encouraged in those masters, you need to treat them well because masters have masters. God is the ultimate master of us all. And I do it not with our service, of, nor as a man pleaser. I'm doing it simply because I'm doing it with fear and trembling. 
That is the ideal of it is that I have a great deal of respect for God. I have a great deal of respect for the Lord. The same thing, phraseology, is used in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. He said, you ought to work out your soul salvation how? With fear. Work it out how? With trembling. The ideal of it is, is that salvation, listen, that great respect, I know who I am. God has saved me from my past. God is saving me in my presence, and I'm hoping that God will one day take me home at the end time. You see, the problem of it is, is that we'll not be so trembling and fearful of this and that I'm afraid of this, but I'm so reverential of God. Our God is an awesome God, and we ought to serve him. I'm not fearing man. I'm fearing him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. That's Christ's servant, and I'm doing goodwill. You see, our point of it is, is that sometimes we need to understand our servant is going to do good. We're going to do goodwill. Even if people don't like me, even if people don't like you, even if people just don't appreciate it, guess what? Do the right thing. Do good no matter what. Why? Because I know that my God is looking at me. And even I got people who do you wrong, do me wrong. You've had folks who've done you wrong and folks who've done. And guess what you're saying? God is sitting watching you, just seeing how you respond. Will you become like the world or will you be transformed by the renewing of your mind? Will you be shaped and molded into the pattern, the lifestyle of the world? Or will you just simply come out and transform yourself and have a tremendous metamorphosis in life and be altogether different than everybody? See, the point of it is, is that, listen, I'm doing it for the goodwill of men. You see, they think they got the bluff on me. They think they have the bluff on you. The only thing that they have is that, listen, they may be bluffing, but God is blessing me because I do what God would have me to do. And that leads us to this point. It ought to be genuine. Doing the will of God from the soul or from the heart. That's the word. You, the word idea is the word suke right here in this particular point. You obeyed much more in my absence. It's a genuine thing. Paul said, listen, you, you obeyed when I was there, but you obeyed much more in my absence. Work out. See, the point of it is, I don't know about you, but I did a lot of things, and you probably did too. And my mom never would have to talk, but but I tell you what, she could make some faces. I knew what it meant. I'd be sitting around there doing something. She'd just look at me, boy. She'd just give me that eye, boy, and shake that head. I said, uh-oh. I know what that means. And when she looked at me and bite her lip like that, I said, oh, oh. You ought to be to the point because, listen, you're not doing it as I service the men pleasers. You do it even if no one was around you. You do the right thing. Because our God is an awesome God. He's an omnipresent God. God is everywhere. And so the point of it is, you obey much more in my presence. That's an all seeing eye watching you. Here's our last and final point. I told you it was quick, wasn't it? We have a reward as a servant of God. Whatever good thing he does, he will receive from the Lord. We need to come to admit some things. That when I do the right thing as a servant of God, I will in turn be blessed. I may not understand how or through whom, but I can tell you one thing. God will bless you. God will bless me, and he has done it for all of us. Has he not blessed us? Yes. Whenever you do good by doing and serving as you should, God will bless you. Look at Galatians 6, 10, uh, 6 in there just for a moment. The Bible teaches us that, listen, that, that we ought to be doing good unto all men, especially those that have household the faith. And then he goes on to tell these people here when it comes down to serving people and helping people in life. He said, if you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life. Listen, when you make a spiritual investment, God will bless you. And in Galatians, he tries to tell them in that context, whenever you make an investment in the spiritual things of God, you will be blessed. All of us will be blessed. We will see our blessing go up. As our effort go up, the blessings will come down. He said, listen, for you will do that. Whatsoever man sow it, that shall he reap. 
the ideal of it is, is being a servant of God, as he tells the Galatian church. If you move forward and serve and help people, God will bless you for what you've done. And he tells these servants here who are undergoing some difficult time, you do good and God will bless you. But I can't do good. He doesn't treat me fairly. No, you treat him fairly. Well, he disrespects me. You respect her. Whatever you do, God will bless you. You do the right thing if no one else chooses to. So as you serve on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, you need to be thinking about this one thing, that whatever good thing you do, you shall receive from the Lord. God's going to bless you. God's going to bless you. Listen, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. What do you mean? Not only do I have heaven as my home in the after while, but Jesus came that we may have life. He said, listen, if you continue my word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall do up. It shall set you free. You still may be bound, but you are free. You may be sitting behind and standing behind the cold bars of a cell or resting over in the dark coldness of a dungeon, but I still tell you what, your body may be bound, but your spirit has really soared. You see, the point of it is, is that, listen, we could be all captured and chained and yet still be as free as God would ever have us to be. He said, if you continue my word, you're my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth does what? Set you free. How many of us are free tonight? How many of us are free tonight? Jesus set you free back on that day when you gave your life to him and you became a child of God. But some of us have been weighed down behind the bars and walls of some of life's difficulties as Brother Paula was talking about this morning and Brother Holly. But the point of it is, is that what we need to do, realize our freedom in the Lord. You see, the point is we have a reward from God. What am I going to get out of this? I'm doing things. What do you do that? Some church members may say that themselves. I'm doing all this. I'm not getting nothing out of it. Listen, God's blessing you. Well, I don't see it. Well, you don't have to see it and know it. But God's blessing you. Do the right thing. He said to the church at Ephesus, do the right thing. God will bless you. You are a servant, but you are a servant of Christ first. I'm a prisoner of the Lord. I'm a prisoner of the Lord. I have been purchased. I'm a bond servant. I realize that whatever he says for me, I need to do it. Why? Because that's the way it is. Our service is to God. Whatever you do, ask to the Lord, not to man. That's what I'm saying is that you, you, say, you might have somebody that, you know, say, well, well, you know, he needs to be visited. She needs to be visited. I don't like her. She, she ain't never visited me. The point of it is, is that you, if we lock in to the person that we're serving, we have difficulty at time doing it. And, and I understand from a human perspective that it's difficult. But if I can see God behind them, Jesus told his disciples a long time ago, listen what he said. He said, listen, uh, I was hungry. And you fed me not. I was naked and you clothed me not. I was sick, you visited me not. I was in prison, you didn't come to me. They said, well, Lord, when did we see you? He said, when you've done it unto the least of, the, of thee, you have done it unto me. The point of it is that we got to look past the person and see Jesus Christ. And when I see Jesus Christ, no matter how you receive it or not, how you've treated me or ill-treated me, I still need to see God behind the effort because it is God. I'm not just pleasing you. Oh, you may be thinking, oh, I got him where I want. I got her doing the way I want. No, 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 no. It's the Lord got me doing it. It's the Lord. Because I'm not doing it unto men. I'm doing it. Unto the Lord. Every time I listen to someone who has a plaintive cry, I'm doing it unto the Lord. Every time I, I feed a hungry soul, I'm, I'm doing it unto the Lord. 
Every time I help someone who's in the dire straits, I'm doing it unto the Lord. Because every time I helped our humanity, I am making an investment in God's will for me. And guess what? It's not like the stock market. I always have a good, healthy return. God blesses me over, as the song said, over and over again. You're doing service as to the Lord. That put away a whole lot of things. If you know that what you're doing is to God, then you know what you're doing is right. You're seeing past the person, and you're seeing our great high priest, Jesus Christ. And whenever you do things for him, you do it with a smiling voice because you know and a smiling face because you know, guess what? Jesus approves. And that's what life is all about. How good of a servant are we? Here's our representative, and I come to a close rapidly. Jesus is our model. He's a servant. The Bible simply said Jesus thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, you know, he didn't try to hold on to his position in heaven. He realized that if he gave up something, we will all be getting something. He understand that if he comes down and enrobe in the flesh, then we will get to be able to really be like God himself. So Jesus came for a reason. He was a servant of man. They asked the questions his disciples did. Who is the greatest in the kingdom? The ideal of it is he who serves. That's the greatest. You want to be great? Somebody said he must be great. Everybody doing things for him. No, the greatest person, the greatest person is a person who serves. That's what life is all about, young people. It's about serving. It's about being in the community, reaching out to the homeless, reaching out to those who don't have it, those who have no shelter. It's those things that really matters in life. Who's the greatest in the king? He who served and not he. It is Jesus who came to serve and gave his life a ransom. It's all about giving yourself for the betterment of those whom are around you. He's the greatest among he did what pleased his master, God, and he was rewarded. He was rewarded. Who's the greatest in serving in God's kingdom? So when you go to work, whatever you do, you do everything you do for the good of God and not as our service people or men pleasers. Tonight, if you are not a servant of God, would you become one? You and I are going to serve somebody. We're going to serve the devil or we're going to serve God. We're going to yield, as the scripture said, did you not know to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, to obey his service to whom you are? We are either going to yield to the voice of the devil or we're going to succumb and we're going to run on and yield before God himself. Which one will it be? You'll be a servant tonight. Because whether you leave here tonight as a Christian or not, you will be somebody's servant. But now, be the servant of Christ. Do you believe that Jesus came down here to serve man? Of course he did. Even while he was stretched out on the cross in between the two male factors, he said one thing, it is finished. He served humanity. And all that Jesus says and all that Jesus was wanting for us to do is on that great day of Pentecost, the first one after his glorious resurrection. They were there and they asked the men and brethren, what shall we do? And they said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Listen, you need to become a servant tonight if you haven't done it. You need to become the servant of God because if you haven't become a servant of God, you are by nature, you are by your practice a servant of the devil himself. So why not change and serve God so a blessing can come down? Why not serve God so that a bad place doesn't await you? He that believeth in this baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. That's the scripture. We all will become someone's servant, whether you know it or not. Servant of sin, 
a servant of the Son. And each and every day of my walk here on this earth, I'm about serving the Master. I'm about looking past the people and seeing my great high priest in Jesus Christ. Why don't we come and why don't you behave as a servant should? But if you haven't been, when I haven't been, when we haven't been, I thank God for his second law of pardon. That is that, listen, if we confess our fault, he is faithful to forgive us. God will do just that. Why don't we become his servants tonight? Why don't we listen to God's word tonight? Why don't we listen to God's leading people who are over us in the Lord and obey their words and their commands tonight, their examples tonight, their, their advice tonight, and be what God would have us and get in God's kingdom and do one thing, that is to serve the Lord. That's what life is all about. As together we stand and sing. Hear the blessed saint, you are calling me a friend. Brother Ferguson for bringing us a great gospel lesson tonight. So many people in this world don't know their place, don't know their purpose, don't know where they've been, don't know where they're going, don't know what to do. But Brother Ferguson has showed us from the scripture tonight, no one should feel that way. We are all to be servants. 
So many people don't want to listen to anybody else, don't want to obey anybody else, want to do everything their way. It's exactly the opposite of what God says will bring us the full life. Really appreciate, Brother John, the way you've preached tonight. You talked about being a servant of God. What a practical lesson for us. There is so much to be done. And we do not know if we'll have another day to continue in this service. Let's all take this lesson to heart and become greater servants of God. We've had three great days of our lectureship. We have one more to go. But actually tonight is not finished. And uh, I want you to know that we want you to stay after the lesson tonight, after we're dismissed. We're going to have refreshments. This is new for us for Saturday night. Personally, I'm very excited about it. In, in, in the past, we've had refreshments on Thursday night and Friday night. And by Saturday night, usually folks just head back there and there's something left over. So tonight, the ladies decide to go ahead and do it right. So there are refreshments tonight. We really want you to stay. We want to be able to visit and fellowship. As ladies, you want to stay. Enjoy that fellowship. It'll be in the multipurpose room uh, to your left as you're exiting to the left. Remember, the bookstore is still open back in the far part of the building in the education wing. Sister Donna Williams is back there. And uh, you may want to take a look at those materials. She has great uh, books and materials for you. Uh, for your library and your study. I want you to, uh, as, you're, as you're in the multipurpose room tonight, uh, enjoying those refreshments, I want you to notice the slides that will be playing on the screen. You may have noticed them uh, last night or uh, lunch today, but those are going to be playing again tonight. Those slides relate to Latin American missions. Brother Jack Farber is here from Valdosta, Georgia, and all other places where you might find Brother Jack. He's, Brother Jack, hold your hand up. He's back in the back right here. We're so glad he could be with us uh, this weekend for the whole weekend. Uh, if you have an interest in doing mission work overseas, we highly recommend the Latin American Missions. The uh, Good Church in Valdosta, Georgia, the elders there oversee this work. The North Lexington Church has been involved in Latin American Missions for probably 20 years or maybe more. It started out with one of our members going on a campaign uh, into Latin America, and uh, it's it's come to the point now we have uh, we've tried to count them up. There may be between 80 and 100 members of the North Lexington Church that have actually gone on campaigns into Latin America through Latin America missions. We believe in this program. They're training native preachers to preach the gospel in their own tongue. The Bible School of the Americas in Panama City is an outstanding work, also related to Latin America missions. And uh, I hope you'll stop and talk to Brother Jack, take some material that he has, look at the slides he has. We highly commend this work uh, to you. Now, tomorrow, of course, is the Lord's Day. And we'll begin at 9.30 for our Bible class hour. Uh, Steve mentioned that we often like to have preachers from the area. And we're certainly glad to have Brother John tonight. He did such a good job. Tomorrow at 9.30 for the Bible class hour, Brother Danny Murphy, who preaches for the Rolling Hills Church of Christ in Mount Sterling, will be preaching at the 9.30 hour on the topic, Avoid Partiality Like the Lord. Now, for those in our classes, remember grades 5 and up will all meet in the auditorium. Grades 4 and below will have your normal classes in the morning. Then at the 10.30 worship hour, John Cackleman will be with us. He'll be preaching on the, on the topic, Stand in the Lord. And then Brother John will be speaking again at 3 o'clock out at the Cane Ridge Meeting House in Bourbon County on the topic, Bring Them Up in the Lord. We look forward to those lessons from Brother Murphy and Brother Cackleman tomorrow. I just want to make sure I've said everything. Anything else that needs to be announced tonight? Brandon, Steve, Bobby? Cards. Ron reminds me, if you're... Uh, visiting with us in particular, if you'll fill out one of the visitor cards, which you, are red in front of you, and uh, members, uh, wear one of the blue name tags, if you will. If you'll pass those to uh, one of the aisles, they'll be picked up during the closing of our final song. I believe I've made all the announcements. Let's, nope, there's another one. Oh, thank you, Bobby, very much. And first of all, I want to say, I'm going to say this again tomorrow, Brother Bobby Ricks, uh, one of our new deacons has been helping out with the lectureship this year. He's done a tremendous job. and really appreciate everything that Bobby has done. Our technology deacons are, are really tremendous, and all the lessons are recorded. If you want a CD recording to uh, play in your car at home, there's an order form out in the foyer. 
to order CDs of any of the lessons. You can go to our website and play any of the lessons on the website that are recorded. Um, if you've got one of these QR scanners on your smartphone, you can actually go up and you may have seen these signs. They're posted in several places out on the door. You can take your QR scanner, put, stick it up to one of those little blocks of funky looking symbols, and within about 10 seconds, you'll have the lesson on your smartphone. You can listen to it on the way home. And uh, it's really amazing. They've got, I think there are four of them on that sheet that's up, and I'm sure they'll have the other ones up very soon. So we're glad to make this available to you. Uh, the world is certainly changing how we do things. But the extent that we can proclaim the gospel in a broader way with the technology we have, then praise God for that. And we're very thankful to be able to offer those tools to you uh, this year. Anything else tonight to be mentioned? If not, Dave, if you'll come and lead us in a closing song. And then our closing prayer will be led by Brian Egerton. He's our associate minister here at North Lexington. Brian's been with us now for a little over a year, which is tremendous. His mother and father are also with him from Cleveland, Tennessee. Brian's good at doing a great work with us. We love him so much. He's going to lead us in our closing prayer after our song. Will you stand, please, as we sing? When the trumpet of the humbly come before you at this time. So thankful for this opportunity we had to be here tonight. Father, we're so honored to be able to study a portion of your word. Father, to understand what it truly means to be a servant of yours. And Father, each day I pray that you will help us to open our eyes and to look around and see those opportunities to reach out and serve those around us and serve them cheerfully knowing, Father, that by serving them we're serving you. Father, I pray that every day of our lives we'll strive to, to live according to your will, to mold our lives to fit within your standards. And Father, I pray that we will keep you in the forefront of our thoughts every single day. Father, we're so thankful for all of the lessons that we've been able to listen to so far in this lectureship. Father, for this idea that, that we have to, to focus on imitating you and your son. Father, to look at the example of Christ and to see how he lived on this earth and try to model our lives after him. Father, I pray that each day 
when we're interacting with those around us, they'll see you through us and everything we say and everything we do. Father, I pray that you will bless us as we travel home tonight. Father, keep us safe. Help us to get a good night's rest to rise and worship you again in the morning. Father, I pray that you will uh, continue to, to be with Todd Walker and his family. I pray that you will uh, be with Bob Taylor and with Sue in their situation. Father, I pray that you will just be with all of those that are on our hearts and on our minds and comfort them and give them strength. Most of all, Father, we are thankful for Jesus. Father, we're so thankful for the life that he lived, for that sacrifice that he made for us, and the hope that he's, he's given to us in heaven one day. It's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.